Oh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Zero from Tech Dragon Art Info, and today we got another review of World of Tanks. This time, the issue 100, the Tier 6 Russian TD. As you can see right here, it's a fixed hull TD, as all Russians are. And well, let's start off by taking a look at the stats. Details here. Um, 580 hit points, which is pretty average for a tier 6. Um, let's grab the tech tree actually. Let's pull up all of these real quick so we can compare a couple of them. That one. Um, let's pick up just the Hellcat, leave the Jackson out of it. And they're pretty similar stat wise. That. And that one. There, let's sort this all out. And there we go. So, 580 hit points is not the lowest, that would be the Hellcat, but it's right in the ballpark. 610, 550, 600, 800, but that's the thing about the British, they have a lot of HP, so, you know, not really a surprise there. However, it is one of the fastest TDs out there. Of course, the Hellcat wins it hands down, but this one comes in a nice and comfortable second at 50 kilometers an hour, which is a pretty respectable speed and pretty decently achievable, I have to say. Traverse speed of 36 is also pretty good, um, better than the German, better than the British, better than the French, and actually better than the Hellcat. So, best traverse speed. Pretty nice. Um, whole armor, well, you can't really compare to the British. Nothing compares to the British TD, so you can't compare that. But 75 versus 80 versus 13. <laughs> That's just sad. Versus 60. However, it's angled at quite a steep angle, as I'll show you in a sec. So that effectively makes it a lot better armor than it has on paper, although you really can't rely on it bouncing, but it can bounce the occasional shot. The shell damage, we'll get into that in a second. Um, same with the rate of fire. Gun traverse speed, uh, 44, which is actually pretty good. Same as the German, uh, better than the French, and a lot better than the uh, Hellcat. But that's because the Hellcat has a turret. It's not just gun traverse, it's actual turret traverse. And on the Hellcat, that's horrifically slow. So, but you can't really compare that. Signal range, 525. Well, these are all standard stats because I don't own them, so the upgraded ones are all pretty much the same. So, it's nothing extraordinary. It doesn't have any, um, you know, features like the British have their very heavy armor. Well, I guess there's one feature. I'll get to that in a second. So, as you can see, this it's pretty well sloped. Um, so, you can definitely bounce the occasional shot and quite the gun mantlet on it as well. You can definitely bounce a shot, but it's not like anybody's going to have trouble pinning you. And you also have this massive weak point at the top here if they really can't pin you for whatever reason. Which I find, I don't know, maybe a tier 4, if you're top tier. It, that's about the only thing I can imagine. So, that's what it looks like. Um, as for the... I'll take a look at the research tree. I don't have the final gun yet, so I can't tell you about that one, but we can talk about that in a little bit. So the radio, 525, not great, but doable. Engine, 520 horsepower, coming from 500, um, so it's not really that much of an upgrade. So the engine is probably not your priority when you're upgrading this tank. Um, it's only 50 more horsepower for the same weight, so... You know, there's not much change there. And if you went down the medium line, you already have this engine. So keep that in mind. So for the tracks, the usual. Gives you some more traverse and more load limits for the same weight, so that's always nice. Now, the guns is where this tank gets rather weird. You have basically the choice between three different guns, and they're all top guns. There isn't one particular gun that is the best one. That's the weird thing about this tank. So let me pull up the stats here. And this one. 
So we have 85mm, the second one at the stock. I'll leave the stock out of this. Uh, well, we can include it real quick, but it's a stock. What do you expect? <laughs> They're usually shit. So let's compare these two real quick. Stock has a slightly higher rate of fire, less pen, less damage, less accuracy, same aim time, is slightly lighter. So the stock is pretty shit in in, in any case you don't want to use it. I mean you'll have to when you start off with the tank, but it's not a keeper. The rate of fire doesn't justify the rest of the stats, so... But anyways, two to three choices. If you're going to the SU-100M1, which I don't recommend, um, I'll put up a um, video comment underneath this video, and I'll put up a link in the description towards... Actually, I'll put an annotation right below down here um, to my other video about the choice between going between these two tanks. And I'll also explain why I have this tank again. Um, as you can see, I have this researched. Yeah, so I'm not going to go into that right now, but if you're going to the SU-100M1, all you have to research is the 85mm, and you can go down that line, which is cheaper, because these two are expensive to research, 16.5k and 17k. So, if you don't have to, really have to, I would suggest going down here. But anyways, getting back to the guns. This one, of course, the 85mm has by far the highest rate of fire out of all of them. However, the penetration with 144 is rather lacking. It is really, really lacking, and you'll really notice it when you get into those, you know, max tier spread games. So when you're in, like, tier 8, it really starts to show how crappy it is. And 180 damage, it's not bad, it's workable, but, mm, you know, it's meh. 0.34 accuracy, I felt like it was a lot less accurate than that. Because um, this supposedly is pretty accurate, but it really wasn't. And 2.3 aiming time is pretty standard, except for the 122mm. So, overall, it's a pretty well-rounded gun. It's definitely doable. I mean, I grinded out the gun and the next tank, this one, the issue 100M1, with just this gun. So it's definitely workable. It's just pretty meh. So you probably don't want this as an end game and tank kind of gun. So then the choice is between 100mm and 120 And they're quite different. Um, rate of fire is almost double on the 100mm. So 8.45 versus 4.69, that's quite the difference. Penetration is exactly the same. However, the damage goes up from 230 to 390. That's quite a bit extra damage there, but you pay for it with a lower accuracy rate and a higher aiming time. And the gun is slightly heavier. So, the choice you have here really is between a less damaging, faster firing, firing more accurate gun with a shorter aiming time versus a big bada boom kind of gun. Um, you know, just your standards, shoot them in the face, blow them up in one go and then get the fuck out while you reload kind of gun. So it really depends on your playstyle. Um, 122mm requires you to be a bit closer because of the lack of accuracy, although it's not much between the two. You know, there's a little bit of a gap between them, so... More of a sniper, more of a big bada boom DPS um, kind of gun. Well, that DPM, excuse me. So, that's what you have to choose between. Now, if you take a look at all three of these guns, and take a look at their damage per minute, um, theoretical output. So that simply puts the rate of fire times the amount of damage, so leaving out misses or penetrations or that sort of thing. They're all pretty close. Um, the 100mm actually comes out on top. This one can pump out the most damage per minute if everything hits and everything pens and, you know, the average damage rule and all that. Um, the second is the 85mm, actually, in fact. And 122 millimeters is actually the lowest amount of damage per minute. However, you have the highest amount of damage per shot. So where this gun might need two and this one might need three shots to finish somebody off, this one could potentially do it in one. So, you know, that's how you have to balance it. Those bigger guns are slower, but you also get more kills because you do more damage in one shot. So it's easier to finish somebody off. However, if you miss, you have a longer reload. So... It really is up to personal preference which one you want. Um, I think I'm going to stick with the 100mm. 
like I said, I don't have it researched yet, the 122. I'll have to, because I'm going here, so I will. Um, and I'll definitely try out the 122 mil, but I kind of like the 100 mil. Let's take a quick look at the ammo load. 252 credits a shell, and the same for high explosive. That's usually not the same, but... And 4,000 credits for the premium shells. However, this might change with the 8.6 update, so I'm not quite sure what it's going to cost then. So, I'll take a look. Um, for my consumable or my consumables. Well, these are my consumables, just to stand a layout for my equipment. There we go. I just equip a camo net and binoculars for now, and I have a rammer on here. I don't really feel the need for putting on a... Where are you? Gun leg drive. Um, a, because I'm poor as hell at the moment and don't have the money. And B, the 2.3 second aiming time isn't too bad with the um, rate of fire, which is about... Uh, what is it? Once every 5 seconds or so? I don't know, from the top of my head. I'll have to calculate that. Let's see, let's calculate that real quick. Um, 8.45. That is 7 seconds without modifiers. So that's without the rammer, that's without crew, um, and all that sort of stuff. So um, you're looking at about 6 seconds, roughly, reload time. So 6 seconds reload time versus 2 seconds, 2.3 seconds aiming time. You're going to be aimed before you can shoot again, so I'm not bothered about aiming time. I'd rather be covered and see a bit more, because this tank isn't blind, but it definitely doesn't have the best view range out there either, so... You know, I like to balance that, so I like my TDs with camonets and monoculars, but it depends on the TD, of course. So, I think that about covers the garage part of this tank. Um, I have a replay of a game I played about two weeks ago. Um, and in fact, it was the first game I played after I re-got this tank. Uh, keep in mind, it is with the 85mm, not with the 100mm. So, let's take a look at that game. Here we are on Sand River, as you can see, and, well, it's a pretty rough matchup, um, two tier eights though, so it's not too bad, but a lot of scouts, and, yeah, scouts, um, as you can see this tank actually turns around relatively quick as well, and my crew is not 100% yet, and there's no, um, brothers and arms or vents on this tank that I have, so, it already turns pretty down quickly, so that's pretty nice. So, I initially start with camping base. Um, not because I'm a fan of camping base, but more because I'm just trying to figure out where everybody's going, what everybody's doing, and where, you know, I'm potentially needed. Yeah, that's a very small little target. That's not gonna go in. Here you have that aiming time. Yeah, I missed. Too long on the aiming time there. Once you relocate. So, yeah, aiming time isn't the best. So, if, you, if you're if you thinking about keeping this tank, then you might want to get a um, vent or a um, gun laying drive. Just to help out with that aiming time. It's, I mean, it's not slow, but I don't know. If you want to make those snapshots actually count, then it's slightly difficult. So, here we have the desert getting flanked. And uh, he just backs out, and I just hit his turret on the round part. And this M4 pushes him out of my line of sight. Good job. I'm trying to move forward so I can get this medium in sight. There he is. And he's behind a hill. Okay. Of course he is. I'm debating what I want to do. It's like, yeah, I'll move up in a desert. They don't seem to be doing too hot and getting relatively destroyed. So. And it's not the aiming time that's the problem. It's the waiting for the um, zoom in to start is a problem. And that went very, very left there, uh, to the outer edge of my aiming circle. Now 
Ja, da war er So yeah, this was my absolute first game after I rebought this thing. Like I said, um, I rebought it for a reason because I really didn't like the SU-100 line and the SU-100M1. It sucks. But that's already covered in another video, so I'm not gonna talk about that now. So, it's pretty even at the moment. We seem to have a nice sweeping line across the map there. And I really have not done a whole lot this game. I hit that, um, was it Tiger P? Yeah, Tiger P twice, I think. That was about it. So, mmm, not doing too well. afraid he was gonna go out of my sight, but nope. And we finish him off. Finally a kill. We've done something. Somebody is not happy with the T25. Uh, T25 AT killed him. Huh? Didn't kill him. Hmm. I have no idea. He's pissed about something. So, here I try to figure out where this T25 slash 2 is. To figure out if I can. Hey, that is not destructible. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and before I got that, he's dead, but oh, looky! But what I don't understand is I'm 362 meters away, my cam on it wasn't engaged, and he does not see me. I don't know what the view range is of the T 34, but he never pointed his gun at me, so into his lower hall. I was actually aiming for the um, machine gun and then I realized, well, I'm, I'm probably better off aiming slightly lower so I can shoot in the lower hall. But yeah, as you can see, the shots are just pretty much spread out over his whole tank at 360 meters, but it's still relatively accurate. But like I said, this is the 85 millimeter. So yeah, it's very hard to... And as you can see here, he's trying to focus down on me. He's trying to figure out where I am at, and he's just looking at tracers. And at this point, I'm like, no, no, I think he figured out where I'm at. He's just fired, and I know he has a very long reload. But I don't think he still figured out where I'm at. And I shoot the bloody building in front of me. He's like, oh my god, are you kidding me? Come on, come on, come on. Ugh, and it went low. No! Come on, I want to get that kill. Nah, too late. Next best thing, Tiger. So, I'm guessing that this tank has a pretty good stealth value. Um, I mean, it remained hidden without a bush in front of me. Um, at 350 meters while shooting. Again. Then again, you know, by the time I was shooting, my camo net was activated, but still, that's not too bad. Um, I, I've had tanks that were just lit up across the map when they shot. Um, not necessarily a TD, but there's just tanks, some tanks just have no camo value, and you, you know, you notice it. This one seems to have pretty good camo. I mean, it's a pretty low profile tank, let's face it. You know, I can hide behind these buildings with ease. It's this low piece of building here would totally cover me. And a prototype. Oh, those things are nasty. Still working on getting mine. Probably gonna do a review on the T25-2 soon. Well, a proto. A little bit more. Oh, dang it. And this game is pretty much over. I mean, they only have two. Although, you know, doesn't necessarily mean that they can't make it, but... Oh, look, it's a prototype, and it's side. Sure. I'll tap that. Trying to go for a track shot, and I make it. And somebody else kills him. Sadly, this was not 8.6 yet, so I didn't get credit for a track shot. Darn. <laughs> That would have been nice. I would have gotten experience from that one then. But alas. And the last one is finished off for a GG. 
So while we take a look at the stats and what I achieved in this game, I'll do a brief recap of this tank. Good stealth value. Um, it has three good gun choices, as you saw. This was the 85mm. You can do well with that as well. You don't have to go for the 100 or 122mm. Um, good gun choices, good mobility, good turn rates. Um, it can bounce a shot, and that's about it. It's a pretty decent, well-balanced, well-rounded tank. And it has a gun for three different types of playstyles, so it's the most versatile tank I've ever seen, I think. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, please subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.